Hello and welcome to Rathod's IS Academy. Today in this session we are going to see current affairs of 29th October 2024. So let's get started with our discussion and let us see the first article. So see this article guys. So what is the title of this article? Okay, finance minister flags of urban demand factory output maintains growth figure. So what is this article talking about? What are the keywords that you can identify in this article? Urban demand is decreasing and there is also decreasing factory output. But in return we are also maintaining the growth. Okay, so now the keyword is Demand slowdown. Demand slowdown. So, from which subject you can see this topic? From GS paper 3 under economy. Apart from this, apart from this, from GS paper to society as well. Okay, now we have to focus on why there is slowdown of demand. So tell me what are the reasons why there is decreasing of demand, especially in urban areas. So first important dimension you have to see is what is the reason or why there is decreasing of urban demand. And second one is you have to see what will be the impact. What will be the impact of decreasing of demand in urban areas. And you have to see what is the role of government and even RBI to increase demand. Okay, so these are the very important areas that you have to now focus on. Okay, let us see the context why it is in use. So context says that the finance ministry has expressed some concerns regarding weakening of urban consumer demand. That is there is decreasing of urban consumer demand. That is demand of consumers in urban areas when we are comparing to that of rural areas. And even there is decreasing of industrial output. Industrial output is also decreasing. And next one is actually... If you see the growth forecast, 6.527% recently the growth forecast that we have seen in this 2024 to 2025. Okay, so here the context is saying that, yes, finance ministry has expressed the concerns regarding there is weakening of the growth is happening in our economy and there is also decreasing of our industrial output. But recently we got a forecast that, Yes, RBI said this year in this financial 2024 to 2025, we are going to maintain the growth of 7%. So yes, recently we studied and we understood in our current affairs that there is decreasing of growth. But how we can maintain this? So this is one important question that is now raised. So despite of decreasing of our consumer demand in urban areas, how we can maintain this growth? Because in, in this rural areas, obviously the economy is dependent upon primary sector that is agriculture. So if you see the contribution of agriculture is very low to our GDP. And if urban areas demand is decreasing, that means we can understand that the, grow, uh, the output or the GDP contribution from this manufacturing sector and from the service sector is going to be decreased soon. So that is our cause of concern now. And here, especially in which areas there is decreasing of consumer demand is, first one is fast moving consumer goods. So what are these fast moving consumer goods? Do you have any idea about this? Fast moving consumer goods. No idea. So it is nothing but packaged goods, like which is having very small shelf life, very low shelf life, like dairy products, like milk products, etc. And even regarding this automobiles, also there is decreasing of demands in urban areas. On another side, this article is saying that there is improving of rural demand. Why there is improving of rural demand now? Because now if you see these seasons, we have festive seasons. Like recently we had this time, now we are going to have Diwali. And in next two months, we will be having Christmas. 
So normally during this festive season, there will be obviously increasing of demand from the consumers. So now there is improved rural demand. And now, especially because of this festive season, but almost every time it is, it is not going to be equal in the rural areas and urban areas. Sometimes there will be demand more in urban areas, sometimes demand more in rural areas. So this time we have demand in the rural areas. We have also take, we need to also take into consideration. So this time, do we have El Nino or La Nina? Huh? So what is the rainfall that we got in this monsoon? It is near to the normal rainfall, right? So because of this, there is good expectations from the agriculture in these rural areas. So this is also one reason why there is improved rural demand. But we have to always take into consideration like how the geopolitical scenario will be having impact on our Indian economy. Okay, so if you see the key important things from this article, it says that urban versus rural demand. So there is the difference between urban areas and rural areas regarding the demand of the goods and services. So here, whenever we observe that there is decreasing of demand in urban areas, obviously government need to take some measures to improve this urban markets. Government need to especially focus on public expenditure or public spending in urban areas so that overall economic growth we can ensure. And this one here is especially whenever we are seeing there is decreasing of demand in urban areas, there is some disturbance which we can see in this manufacturing sector. So here we can understand that there is stagnation in this manufacturing sector because of some structural issues. So government need to come up with necessary policy interventions so that we can reinvigorate. That means we can also come back to that growth normal. And next one here is we have to even monitor the consumer sentiments. So finance ministry is saying that, yes, we have to also focus on the consumer sentiments like psychological factors, even in economic performance. So when the people going for more demand of goods and services, when the people are going for less demands of goods and services. So what exactly why there is difference that is seen in these rural areas and urban areas. If you are knowing about the psychological factors that are influencing this demand, Obviously, government will be focusing on that factors and that will be helpful for confidence building measures as well. And this one is even there is impact on weather. So there is correlation between the rainfall and as well as consumer behavior. If you are getting good amount of rainfall, obviously it will lead to increasing of agriculture productivity. So whenever there is increasing of agriculture productivity, so the people who are getting income from this agriculture will be raised. Obviously, that will lead to increasing of demand of goods in especially rural areas and this one here is we have to even focus on this geopolitical concerns like for example russia ukraine crisis israel gaza issue how it is having impact on our domestic economic stability so we have to focus on a proper planning that there should not be any external influence on our indian economy and this one here is we are going to have this festive season now and actually during this festive season we will be having only temporary outlift uplift like only before that, uh, uh, that festival only, there will be increasing of demand for certain goods and certain services. So here, always this festival season will be giving you the temporary uplift only. So here, we should not focus on that as well. So always economic growth should be sustainable. And next one here is we need to focus on even confidence signals of RBI. So RBI need to take a proper measure so that it can improve the cons consumer or customer confidence. Okay, let us see about this fast movement consumer goods. They're also called as consumer packaged goods. It is very important. And there is a high chance of getting your prelims based question on this topic. They may give you consider the following statements regarding fast moving consumer goods or consumer packaged goods. So these products are sold very quickly and at a very low cost. And because of this fast moving consumer goods, we will be selling them with a very high volume. So very huge amount of goods that we will be selling. And especially those are required for our everyday items. For example, food, beverages, etc., toiletries, cleaning supplies, and even especially meat, dairy products, and baked goods. So they are coming under this category of consumer packaged goods. So if you see this sector in our country, so this fast moving consumer goods, it is the fourth largest sector in our Indian economy. It is very important point. 
and in 2022 so this urban sector accounted for 65 percentage of overall annual food sales so actually when we compare to rural areas and urban areas so in the people in the urban areas they will be going for work in the morning and they will be coming back in the evening so that they will be dependent on this packaged foods rather than doing on their own so because of this 65 percent of goods are sell in urban areas compared to that of rural areas and household and personal care products they comes under like 50 percentage of industry sales and even health related products and food and beverage products are the part of this consumer packaged goods and this sector is also providing huge employment around 3 million people they are employed under this so if suddenly if there is decreasing of demand for this fast moving consumer goods it will be affecting employment it will be affecting our economy it will be affecting the livelihood of people and even it will make standard of living of urban people will be low okay so all these things that you have to remember yeah and see this article guys tamil nadu declares heat waves a state specific disaster yes tell me what is the keyword here heat waves next state specific disaster so first keyword is heat wave second one is state specific disaster okay so from which subject you will be reading this topics so heat wave from your gs paper 1 under geography under gs paper 3 environment and ecology and from gs paper 3 under disaster management and from gs paper 2 under society and from gs paper 2 under governance next huh? yeah so gs paper 3 under economy next huh? that's it okay <laughs> so from geography what you have to see the dimensions what is heat wave and what imd says about that is classification of imd tell me what is the temperature in plains what is the temperature in hilly regions and coastal areas uh, 40 37 30 5 okay and next you have to see what are the causes of this heat wave what are the causes of this heat wave? Why we are having heat wave? Causes of heat wave? Uh, global warming. Next. Next. Okay, write down the causes. Next. What will be the impacts? And from economy, what you can see? How this heat wave will be having impact on agricultural productivity and food security and labor productivity right okay and how this heat wave will be impacting gdp of the countries so you have to collect the data from this economy and from environment how this climate change is leading to increasing of heat waves so you can write about the recent and relevant examples in europe so european countries had this heat waves recently so you have to see that and from governance point of view, what are the policies and programs of government which they are focusing on heat waves? And from disaster management, you have to see disaster management cycle. And as well as you have to see state disaster fund. Now, how the state is going to use that fund? Because of this, this is the news. And from society point of view, again, you have to see what is the impact on society especially impact on vulnerable sections of society impact on vulnerable sections so all these are the very important dimensions and here there is a very high chance of getting your prelims based question regarding state specific disaster like what is the criteria we have to take into consideration to to declare any disaster as a state specific disaster that is the first important point and second important point you have to see what will be the advantages if any disaster is declared as this state specific disaster so these two are the very important areas from which you can get a main space question 
Okay, let us see why it is a news. So, Tamil Nadu government declared heat waves as a state specific disaster, enabling immediate relief measures to those who had been affected by this extreme temperatures, particularly people in urban areas during April and May 2024. So, during April and May 2024, who are the people who faced issues with this heat wave, they are going to get some funds. Okay, that they are going to get some immediate relief measures. So, this is the thing which mainly said by now Tamil Nadu state government. So, they are going to give about X ratio of rupees 4 lakhs for the families of heat related fatalities. That means death happened because of heat waves. So, now those families are getting like 4 lakh rupees for a family under this disaster response fund. So, now here this disaster response fund used for this payments for this X ratio and even they are focusing on improving of medical health care and drinking water access in this high risk regions. So here you will be also getting a case study if you are a district magistrate or district collector of that area where that so and so area is very much vulnerable to this heat waves in Tamil Nadu. So how you are going to take some measures to control that. So these are the two important things that you have to focus on like immediate improving of medical medical infrastructure or healthcare infrastructure in that region and next one here is drinking water access. So these two points that you have to focus. And if you see some important details, the first one here is, yes, because of this heat waves, it is having obviously the impact on the public health. So whenever we are going for declaration of that so and so heat waves as a state related disaster, it will be very helpful for especially helping of vulnerable groups like elderly people and as well as children. And we can also take some proactive health measures and even we can go for education of people regarding what are these heat waves and what are the precautionary measures that you have to take in that extreme conditions. And even we can understand that one of the important reason for this heat waves is urban heat island. What is this urban heat island effect? So in urban areas we are going for expansion, we are going for using of more concretization, laying of roads, everything they will absorb more heat and they will not let the heat to escape. So because of this, urban areas will be comparatively having more heat compared to that of rural areas. So because of this urban heat island effect, there is increasing of temperature that will obviously leads to the heat waves. So here, for this, we need to have a proper urban planning and we have to improve urban green infrastructure. So can you give me some examples of urban green infrastructure? So the second important point in the case study that you have to take here is especially I will be focusing on urban planning and I will be improving green infrastructure. So can you give me some examples of green infrastructure which is in use recently? Uh, green parks. Uh, next. Miyamaki method of afforestation. So write those in the examples part. And this one here is yes we are also going to provide some assistance to the families who face with these fatalities. So here they are focusing on financial compensation for the families who are affected by this heat related fatalities and actually we are going for even how to address this climate related disasters also under this. And even this article is focusing that we have to give proper immediate relief for the people who are facing this extreme weather events. So for that we have to focus on the disaster preparedness and as well as resource allocation. So at that time of disaster, how you can prepare yourself like providing ORS or providing proper drinking water facilities and providing proper electrolytes, etc. And this one here is, even we can see there are some regional disparities. So especially urban areas are having this kind of heat wave compared to the rural areas. That means even we can understand that climate change is having varying impacts on different locations. It is not same. So you have to go for bottom to top approach rather than top to bottom approach. Like for example, if you're taking this state of Tamil Nadu, it is saying that only some regions are vulnerable to this. So you have to take actions which are specific to that region, not like entire Tamil Nadu as a whole. Okay, so that is the thing which mainly said. And even we have to focus on climate adaptation strategies, like whatever the buildings you are building in that so and so urban areas, they have to be resilient, okay? And even we have to focus on 
how we have to combat this future heat waves and even we have to focus on public awareness campaigns and even infrastructure improvements so all these needs to be done so what is a state specific disaster disasters within the local context in the state that are not included the notified list of disasters of ministry of home affairs they will be announced by the state government so state specific disaster which is the arena of state government but not union ministry of home affairs so for this who will be funding from state disaster response fund from sdrf it will be funding so under this sdrf they will be using around 10% of the funds which are available for providing of immediate relief and who is the responsible authority for releasing of the funds under sdrf that is sdma that is state disaster management authority so who are the members of the state disaster management authority so we have chief minister who is ex officio chairman of this authority and the district level we have district uh, disaster management authority who is nothing but you in the future who will be guiding that and this one is yes this sdma can take an actions of overriding other norms including those under this wildlife protection act so you will be having more powers if you are heading that disaster district management authority okay see this article guys odisha releases female tiger in simli pal to check in breeding so what is this article is about where is the simli pal reserve is located odisha okay Odi odisha releases female tiger in simli pal to check in breeding so what is this article talking about so actually simli pal is located in odisha but they are going to get this female tiger from tadoba anderi tiger reserve so where is the tadoba anderi tiger reserve is located in maharashtra so why from maharashtra we are bringing this tiger to release in this odisha Maharashtra to Odisha. Why? From one tiger reserve to another tiger reserve. Why? What is the need, guys? Is that necessary to bring tiger from Maharashtra and to leave in this Odisha? To increase the number of tigers. Aren't we have this number of tigers in the Simli Pal? We have enough number of tigers in Simli Pal. But why the tiger from there to here? Because of to check this inbreeding. What is the meaning of inbreeding? inbreeding is nothing but mating which is happening in the similar or similar population so what happens whenever the mating is happening within the similar population so we will be getting genetic defects so to stop that genetic defects we need to have breeding from the different kinds so actually if you see in the marriages also consanguine consanguineous marriage is not allowed like within the same family they will be going for marriages so whenever you are having marriages within the family what happens there will be some genetical problems that you can see in the next generation right to stop that always always marriage is out of your family suggested even when you go to any doctor for counseling they will be advising you that try to go for marriage out of your family okay so the same thing so whenever the breeding which is happening in the same family of animals also in the same region that is causes some genetic defects so because of this to stop this yes we are getting this tigers from maharashtra and we are leaving them in this simli pal region so that we can control this problem of inbreeding okay so from which uh, subject it is important from environment and ecology and from your science and technology point of view okay so if you see the context it says that the odisha government has translocated Two year old female tiger from Maharashtra's Tadoba Andheri Tiger is out to Simli Pal. So here there is a highly uh, chance of getting question regarding this tiger reserve and which state is located. So especially the tiger reserves or national parks which are in use, you can get a question on this. Okay, so they may give like Simli Pal Tiger Reserve is in use in which state it is located, and they give simple options A, B, C, D. You can do that. There is no doubt in that. But if you are getting a question like tiger reserve on one side and state on one one side if they are giving two to three pairs so they may ask which are the correct pairs or which are incorrect pairs so they will try to complicate your question so you have to know this as well so not only these two tiger reserves which are in use but you have to focus on other tiger reserves in our country along with their state okay so this initiative it is very helpful for improving of genetic diversity of local tiger population 
and even we can address this problem of inbreeding. So because of inbreeding, they are getting some genetical disorder. It is called as pseudomelanistic tigers. So recently we discussed, I think, one article like tigers are not having like more stripes. They are appearing black. Okay. Okay. I will show you how it will be. So here in this image, you can see, yes, this is orange color. On this orange color, we are having black strips. So what happens was, so there will be more number of black strips like this and it, and it will be appearing like a black tiger. So this is the one genetic problem that we are getting in the tigers because of inbreeding. So this condition is called as pseudomelanistic tiger. Okay, this condition is called as pseudomelanistic tiger. Okay, so to control this problem, we are going to transfer or shift this tigers from one tiger reserve to another tiger reserve to control this, especially genetic diversity. So if you see some key points that you have to remember is, yes, for conservation of these animals also we need collaboration. So now there is collaboration between states. Which states are collaborating here? Odisha and as well as Maharashtra. So we need interstate cooperation for this wildlife reserve. So not only interstate, but if you are focusing on conservation of any animals which is moving from one country to another country, we need even international collaborations. So can you tell me some examples of international collaboration that we are focusing on, uh, like conservation of wild animals? Project Cheetah, uh, from which country we got this cheetahs? Namibia and? Uh, only from Namibia, from two countries we got this. Uh, Namibia and? Uh, uh, tell me. <laughs> Namibia and South Africa. Next. Any other examples of any other animals? So can you name some national parks which are present at the boundary of India and Nepal or India and Bhutan or India and China? Uh, uh, come on. I, I gave this example, I think so, earlier. Can you name some examples of national parks? So if you are having that kind of national parks which are at boundary of India and other countries, Obviously, it comes under collaboration of two countries. International collaboration is very important. So try to note down examples of international collaborations in conservation of wildlife. So India and other countries, which projects they had been adopted. Because whenever you are writing even your international relations regarding those two countries, you can add this point also. This will be a value addition. No one will be writing this point. But you students, you will be writing and you will be getting extra marks. Okay, and next one here is for maintaining of genetic diversity, it is very, very important because whenever we are going for inbreeding, it is changing the genetic material so that it will lead to health problems. And whenever we are not having the good output or good next generation, obviously, the survival rate will be less. So whenever the survival rate will be less, when uh, then can we go for proper conservation? No. Again, whatever the steps we are taking, whatever the funding we are doing for that conservation projects, it will be get failed. And this one here is especially why we are focusing on Simlipal because it is one of the largest reserve in Odisha. And actually Simlipal plays a vital role in state conservation efforts. And especially they are also uh, choosing this because of ecological significance of this Simlipal. And this one here is not only releasing this female tigress into that so and so region is important now, we have to go for even monitoring whether that tiger is mingling with that tiger population or not. Whether this tiger population, they are allowing this tiger to use the same habitat or not. So actually there was one question in 2020 or 2020, 2023 mostly that was they asked about how this big animals they will be showing their aggressiveness towards other animals. Like how these tigers use their patches like that. So see that question once so that you can understand like UPSC will be also giving you the question like whenever you are releasing any animal into any new territory whether how it will be adapting to that environment. So what the other group which is already present there how they will be attacking these animals as well. Okay so we need proper monitoring and as well as we need to focus on how this animal is adapting to the new environment. And next one here is already we have this National Conservation Tiger Conservation Authority as well. So here 
this authority which is focusing on especially conservation of these tigers and we need to have a proper wildlife management and we have to focus on even evidence based decision making so actually it is a pilot project we released uh, around one tiger now and the plan is to release two tigers so after once these tigers are adapting and how the uh, output is there so based on that output we have to take the proper decision in the future so that is the thing which mainly said so what is the inbreeding inbreeding is nothing but mating of closely related individuals of the spe same species or same breed so because of this we are having some drawbacks what are the drawbacks here is there is reduced fertility and there is reduced productivity as well there is increased risk of recessive gene disorders and also we have poor reproduction efficiency and even reduced milk production reduced growth rate and especially in tigers we are getting this pseudo melanistic tiger this is okay see this article guys center warns against illegal digital payment gateways so what is this article is about illegal digital payment gateways so whenever we are using some illegal digital payment gateways okay tell me some examples of payment gateways okay uh, so what is the meaning of payment gateway manoj so have you purchased anything on online uh, so if you are purchasing any codes in rathod sis they will be asking pay through razor pay razor pay is a payment gateway that we are using so if you want to purchase the codes you can directly pay to razor pay and razor pay they will cut their commission and they will returning back the amount to our account so here it is like a payment link that we are using so in the same way there are many illegal digital payment gateways out there so what will be the problems of this illegal digital payment gateways uh yeah. scams okay next privacy how okay you will click all agree and they will be getting access to your mobile your phones data okay everything okay next uh even there is one cause of concern that these digital payment illegal payment gateways are used by transnational criminals for money laundering okay so this is one cause of concern for the government so again you have to know about uh, about this money laundering already i gave you question i think so two days ago okay revise the topic and actually this topic is important from your gs paper 3 under economy so what is money laundering converting of black money into white money so can you tell me some examples ah huh? ah huh? okay hawala transactions ah uh, next shell companies ah uh, next tax haven countries examples of tax haven countries ah huh? okay sia chills okay next okay marshals next Uh, which islands? <laughs> there only. Uh, there only. Tell me which islands. Which islands? <laughs> okay. See this once. Okay. See the context here. Indian Cyber Crime Coordination Center, that is IFRC. So IFRC is highly news. so try to uh, do some research regarding what is cipher so there is a high chance of getting your prelims question and how many of you are writing daily quiz guys daily current affairs quiz yes no where so we are conducting daily current affairs quiz i am giving five questions and i am giving exclusive from your current affairs i am not deviating anywhere so in how many possible ways the question can be asked in upsc i am giving in that possible ways so at least try to see those and try to analyze yourself just five questions will not take more than 5 to 10 minutes of time okay do this at least okay so here i for c wants about illegal digital payment gateways which are been established by transnational criminals and they are using mule bank accounts mule bank accounts to facilitate money laundering 
again one more new word mule bank accounts what are this mule bank accounts uh fake accounts okay so can you give me some examples of this mule bank accounts which had been activated during this covid 19 period uh 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 so actually do you know this jandan account jandan bank accounts at that time the government want to focus on increasing of financial inclusion and because of that they came up with this concept of zero bank accounts so actually during this covid uh, during this demonetization time especially so this most of the zero bank accounts they came into active okay so it is also an example of mule bank accounts okay i will tell you what is this mule bank accounts don't worry so recent trades they said that around 4000 mule accounts they identified daily and they are linked to various online financial scams and that could potentially impact 0.7 percentage of india's gdp you can see how this money laundering is happening at a very large scale in india so when you are writing about this money laundering answer try to include this data for sure okay citizens they are urged not to rent or not to sell their bank accounts to avoid illegal or legal consequence for example here people will be also selling their accounts people will be also giving those accounts for rent because if they are having transactions they will be getting commission so for that commission itself during this demonetization many people they gave their bank accounts to transfer the money okay so because of this what happened if the illegal transaction is happening through the, your financial for example if your bank account is having this illegal financial transaction or if money laundering is happening if any organization which had been find that you then obviously you will be pet, uh, you will be kept inside the bars right so to avoid this legal consequences now government is saying that so be careful about who is using your bank account so don't give your details don't allow anyone to go for transactions into your accounts so actually this article is saying that there is increasing of threat there is illegal digital payment gateways they are posing a serious threat to the financial ecosystem especially it will leads to undermining of our economic stability because about 0.7 percentage of our indian gdp is affected because of this issue right and this one here is they found around 4000 mule accounts daily which suggests that yes the systemic and organized approach which is used by this criminals and it is a very important challenge for the law enforcement agencies to find which account there are more than 4000 accounts per day they are using and this one here is yes there is involvement of transnational organized crime which highlights that yes we have to combat this cyber crime effectively so that for this how we have to ensure like we have to improve our technology we have to improve our organization for dealing with this cyber crime and we have to focus on even social media as well so here these stand such of crime criminals they are using the social media platforms for the recruitment of the people for taking lease or rent of this accounts so we have to address this problem and we have to focus on the better awareness and regulation so actually in this year 2024 ethics in case studies you got this case study of recruiting of unemployed people into terror organization you may get in 2025 a case study of recruitment of people for this mule accounts how you are going to address this challenge you are head of i4c you are head of this cyber crime branch if you are getting this kind of cases how you are going to address this are you understanding how you can expect the question guys yes here you have to focus on this social media okay you have to focus on cyber crime you have to focus on improving of technology improving of awareness to the people are understanding okay next one here is you have to say about what will be the legal consequences to citizens properly like how uh, whenever they are involving in this kind of things like renting of bank accounts or leasing of bank accounts or getting commissions through this transactions etc so what are the legal consequences they will be facing what will be the serious consequences they will be facing if they know about that they will be not doing this work and next one here is we need a proper vigilance so importance of vigilance among the citizens and financial institutions 
to prevent the misuse of banking systems so always we have to have a proper vigilance and we have we need to have even a proper helpline or website to report this cyber crime it is also one of the important step so not only awareness of people but even we need to have a proper reporting mechanism where they have to report if they find this kind of thing is happened okay so this thing also that you need to focus and what is this mule accounts mule accounts are the bank accounts that receive funds from illegal activities and from those accounts they will be transferring the money to another accounts so they will be especially used for this money laundering purpose and for giving their bank accounts for rent or on lease they will be getting some commission also okay and if you see how the consumer needs to uh, follow those steps like so here we should be always we should always be skeptical of unexpected job offers so you'll be getting messages like work from home you can earn daily 10000 or 50000 like that messages you can see so you will be getting lots of links etc so you have to be very careful about that unexpected job offers which are promising high earnings so whenever you are you are getting any job offer with a high earnings it will be always related to some illegal activity and as one is be cautious of unusual payment methods okay so don't do payment by unusual methods and carefully you have to access any request for the personal information and avoid quick decisions when asked to inform identity so these are the steps that you have to write in how awareness campaigns that you have to make okay so you can if you say like creating awareness how you can create awareness so write some points like how you have to create awareness how you will be making know the people about this kind of issues which are going in our society am i making any sense okay next one here is how rbi is taking some measures to combat this mule accounts rbi has tightened consumer due diligence norms cdd so write this point consume uh, customer due diligence uh, norms and even rbi said that requiring bank accounts to adopt risk based approach for the periodic account up update so we have to go for updating of accounts periodically and banks must closely monitor the transactions and banks need to even report suspicious activities and they have to ensure proper kyc norms as well to curb the misuse of accounts okay so these are the steps which are taken by the rbi so even these steps that you may get a mains based question guys okay see this article the under representation of women in judiciary ah uh, what is this article women empowerment ah uh, again one one more feminist come inside me now okay see here what are the reasons behind this a uh, low representation of women in judiciary so we should not deviate uh, here and there it is talking about only judiciary so tell me from judiciary point of view why what are the reasons why there is low representation of women in judiciary okay no proper infrastructure next come on fast okay male dominated arena uh, next come on boys mm why there is less representation of women okay so this article is important from gs paper to under polity gs paper to under garments gs paper to under society whatever thing that you want you can write okay so context says that there is under representation of women in indian judiciary and it is one of the very complex issue that goes beyond entry level recruitment so even at the entry entry level recruitment also women they are not crossing the first stage so they are facing lots of issues so this article is saying that 36.3 percentage of women they are present in district judiciary and in high courts 13.4 percentage of judges and in supreme court 9.3 percentage of judges are women so please make a note of this data so if you're talking about women empowerment in your essay or in your any mains answer try to add this data as well it is very important so even the bar representation also here women representation is very low in this bar council only 15 percentage of advocates are being women in india only 15% you can see how low representation of women in this area 
So what are the challenges? Challenges are normally like policy gaps are there. There is lack of maternity benefits for women in this field, inadequate facilities, no supportive work environment, which is creating a cycle that hinders both entry of women and as well as retention of women in the judiciary. So the important key points in this article are, yes, here there is no proper recruitment of women and after recruitment also the retention is very, very low and there is no proper supportive policies, no infrastructure and women you are struggling a lot in this judiciary and actually judiciary is gender imbalance which is perpetuates itself. So actually judiciary says that there should be no discrimination, all are equal. But here in this field itself, there is very less participation of women. They are facing barriers not only for entry purpose, but even to raise their ranks also, they are facing lots and lots of issues. And even societal expectations regarding women's role is primarily caregivers. So because of this, it is also affecting their professional growth. And next one here is there is lack of basic amenities at the workplace. It is discouraging women from pursuing or remaining in the judicial careers. And in many states, we have these judicial state rules. They are outdated and they are failing to accommodate realities of women life. So we need to fill these policy gaps, whatever we are having. And this one here is public-private divide is also increasing day by day. And because of that also, there is low participation of women in this public life. And next one here is, this article is saying that, yes, we need to have a multi-facet approach. Multi-facet approach. You can use this word whenever you are writing your conclusion answer. Like, if you say something, like, if you are writing about challenges, in the conclusion, you have to say that, yes, we need to take the steps, right? So there you can use this word, multi-facet approach. That goes beyond recruitment to include retention strategies and even infrastructure improvements like that. Okay, so see this articles guys, Solar, a game changer in women empowerment and again there is one article regarding women empowerment di directly. So how this solar thing, or how this solar energy will lead to women empowerment. So there is, there are some uh, case studies which are given like how marginalized sections of communities, they will be getting empowered by using the solar energy, like solar batteries production or like using of solar energy, how they will be get empowered. Like while using the solars, we can also run the pumps so that we will be getting water. So the water carrying capacity of this woman will be decreased and reduced so that they will be getting empowered. So see some case studies regarding this, how solar energy will be a woman empowerment or a game changer. So I'll be giving you the main question on this. So read this article and write this. Okay, other two articles are, what are the challenges does India face in fertilizer imports? So actually we will be getting most of the raw material for our fertilizer production from which country? From Ukraine. So actually because of this Russia-Ukraine crisis, there is increasing of price of this raw material from this Ukraine. And even there is supply chain disruptions which happened. So because of this, what happened? The global fertilizer cost had been obviously increased. So because of this instability in this fertilizer market now, it is having some impact on agriculture production. So in India, without using this fertilizer, we can't go for proper productivity. So because of increasing of uh, price, obviously it is having impact on agriculture productivity. And next, I want to give you one homework, guys. So just do research regarding this word. What is cyclical so slowdown? I think in your economy, you might have uh, studied about this topic of cyclical slowdown. Have you? Yes or no? Uh, what is a cyclical slowdown? Uh, what is the meaning of the cyclical slowdown? Okay, so after this class, just do Google that cyclical slowdown and you have to see why in India we are going to have the cyclical slowdown soon. Okay? So these are the important topics that appeared in our today's Hindu newspaper. So by this I'm concluding. Thank you so much guys for watching. And please do like this class if you really like this class. And please do share this class to your friends. And do subscribe to Rathod Science Academy. Thank you so much.